hollow. A hollow in the anaconda gnarls of the backyard maple collected a green puddle. By the mosquito-infested summer, we moved in. A crust of cement suggested an attempt to fill in the cesspool. Without cement, I made do with the rocks in my yard. Chunks of asphalt from walks with Theo. Railroad spikes. Each item I placed in the egg water displaced more of the egg water, raising its line above the sinister cradle's rim. Bamboo wind chime. I loved the gentle clunk of my bamboo wind chimes before Theo slapped them down from the eaves above the back deck with a broom handle. I loved the bumble of all six weathered cylinders their contemplative huddle of clopping heads, stocks chopped from the hermitage of an exiled Tong dynasty official, or so I imagined before the dismemberment, the ensuing silence. Lamenting on one hand, I must admit on the other, the years of banging had split the tubes right down the middle. One had already dropped. I snipped a loose strand from the wicker chair to weave it back into the suspension ring and wasps had fluted the dark gun barrels with the idea of future wasps, the way the insidious oviposits, even on the brightest of days, planting its smirk in the middle of the music that surrounds us. I wanted to write a poem, a bug being slowly squashed is what today feels like, how the pressure in my head is perhaps a heel. However I twist will only intensify the stare in which I am all bug, all baby, and unentitled to the privileges of a full-blown human. Today there will be no break, no reprieve from the orange slime of lunch the goop of eggplant, so I bury my lips and slurp, spill hatred over the table's edge, to play dead for the tumor in my head, don sweatpants and let the kids steam roll and bulldoze me through nap time. Let shame for wanting bully me speechless, spellbound, allow my sleeping brain to mend.